Guys, welcome to Detective Con. My name is Nima Boa, and today we're going to be talking about Eric Mena's interview with Carlos the King. And when I saw Carlos the King made an interview with Eric Mena, I wasn't sure because he has lately been coming up with a lot of good interviews with Nini Leaks, Kenya Moore, um, different celebrities in America. So I wasn't shocked to see that he was going to do an interview with Eric Mena, and I was really, in a way, excited to see and hear what she had to say regarding the situation with Spice, with the, her calling her um, a blue monkey. We all know that situation by now, that's probably why you're watching this video. And I've made my opinion on this situation in two of my videos, so go and watch that if you haven't seen them. So when I saw that the interview came out today, I was like, I need to watch the interview fully. And it was an interview of one and a half hours. and. I was actually waiting to hear the apology in this video, but apparently there's a part two. So we're just going to be talking about the part one video and we're going to be talking about how the part two is going to end up being because I can only really predict how this is going to end up. I already predicted it in the beginning of the video, so let's go and talk about it right away. And I'm briefly just going to mention some of the situation and things that she's been saying throughout the video. And um, straight, straight out the back. So in the beginning, she already started about her the legal side of her being signed to Latin Hip Hop, the franchise. And she already stated in the beginning that she only has like a year left of the contract. And then after that, she can be free. She could do all different kind of ventures and do other stuff um, without having to include Latin Hip Hop. I don't really know how the whole contract situation is with Latin Hip Hop, but it seems like she has been... A little bit um, limited on what she can do because she is a part of the level hip hop and she has a contract. And right as Carlos was trying to start a asking questions, Erica Mena already wanted to set the tone and play. And I'm not saying the thing is, as much as I hate what she said, the thing that she has gone through, no one should have ever experienced. But I definitely feel like she used that for her advantage because she definitely stopped Carlos as she was trying to lead the conversation, talk about her childhood, how her mom has been in the prison, and you you could and, and when she did that, you can already tell that she is trying to tell us that she is a victim and she has been going through a lot which a lot of people have we all go, f go through different things the things that she has gone through that's certainly things that it's like it's not just a regular thing that anyone goes through is like beyond which we will be talking about later on in this video but she definitely is trying to set the tone up she is a victim too she's not perfect um and i feel like she's trying to do all of this because we're gonna hear the whole side of the story about her talking to Spice like ways that she did in the Latin Hip Hop episode but then she tells us then she was born in prison and she was molested in foster care and says that that's where her egg issues stems from which is sad no one should ever experience that and I totally get that it when she said that I was like okay that's like deep and I have been watching Latin Hip Hop from the beginning and I've watched a lot of things regarding Eric Men as well when it comes to interviews and the reunion so I knew that she had been a video model from a young age I knew that she her mom had a past and um, I didn't really know that much of the past um, I didn't know that she was in foster care and I didn't know that she was molested in the foster care which is sad no one should ever experience that that's like horrible and then she turns it around and tells that she had a stepdad come in to her life when she was seven years old and that's how the life for her changed for the better and also her siblings and her mom because her mom has been in prison and she was in some place i can't remember what it was i think it's like a middle from when you go to prison you go to like this middle situation before you are back to living freely and independent like i think that's like a middle step and that's where her mom met her stepdad and he was a counselor and yeah so everything after that when the step that came into the picture, everything turned to the better, which is really good to hear. And I feel like this whole hearing about Eric Mena's childhood and life and stuff like that, I feel like it is definitely trying to um, feel sympathy for her. And also, so maybe people won't go as hard on her um, when it comes to the, the Spice situation. 
Um, and then she started talking about how she was around different cultures and she went to reggae parties and stunned all on and she stunned on all these wicked queens and this is how she's like slowly trying to tell us that there wasn't anything racial about the situation with Spice like, she comes up with these small hints that she is she grew up in a culture where it was really diverse and she's been around different people um, and this is how she's trying to indicate that nothing that she said to Spice was racially motivated this is how I definitely feel like she's trying to point the narrative on or like trying to mm, how do you say it she's trying to lead the conversation in a specific direction um and trying to shield away from all the things that people have been calling out on that's what i'm trying to say um and then she after that conversation about um Childhood, she goes on to talk about her relation with her son and who took care of him and why he's not in front of the camera. And she is talking about how her mom took care of the, this, helped her with her son. But she also says that everyone in, when you are from Dominican Republic, the way that they do it is like everyone in the family takes care of each other's kids. So that's how she's trying to how he raised up because a lot of people have been coming for her when it comes to her son um, and a lot of people have been coming for her when, when it comes to her son a lot of times and I've seen a lot of people say horrible stuff about her to her face about her son um, and that's why I'm really sure why she reacted the way that she did with Spice because Spice didn't even go that hard on her like in that kind of way she just said your son doesn't like you she didn't even say about you're a bad mom, this and that, this and that. She just said to you, okay, whatever. Let's continue. Um, um, and she tells, and she's talking about how her son is into it, and that's why he's not in front of the camera, and he's a teenager, and she has to. She also talks about having a teenage kid is really hard and stuff like that. And then Carlos, he confronts her says that a lot of people say that her son doesn't like her. And she responses, responses by saying that the consequences of being on TV. And for them to point out that he's a teenager and an introvert, which makes sense. But the thing is, she never talks about how she wasn't there in his son's life. Like she did mention in the beginning saying that oh um there's a lot of years that she cannot get back because she had to hustle which i can understand uh, but yeah she talks a lot about her life as i said um, and then she talks about how she ended up loving hip-hop praises evelyn lazada which is not a good coincidence in this situation because a lot of people have been coming for evelyn lazada as well for racial slurs so for her to compare herself to Evelyn Lazada and praise her, saying that if it wasn't because of Evelyn Lazada being on Basketball Wives, she wouldn't be on Love and Hip Hop. And a lot of people do not like Evelyn Lazada, so I don't really feel like it's a good idea for her to mention Evelyn Lazada, but that's where she went with it. Um, and then she talks about the franchises, the franchise, Love and Hip Hop, and how she used her as a guinea pig, and how little she made in the beginning. And that's why, and then she's tells us that's why so many people are viewing her the wrong way because of love and hip hop which we all know reality tv is always trying to make the situation they're always trying to paint someone as the villain they're always trying to do something to make the tv interesting like that's how reality tv is i feel like it was much worse when it started because a lot of people didn't really have that much insight we were a little bit more naive to think that everything they said was true but now we all know how reality tv is um which is fine, but again, it's just like every time she brings up a topic, she's like trying to make it seem like she's a victim, and she is a victim in a lot of things, but it doesn't really make the situation with the spy situation a lot better. And then, especially when she keeps on coming with these old, these small references, being like, I'm from the Bronx, I lived in um, a neighborhood with different cultures, it was a lot of diversity, and this and that. It's just like, you saying that is not gonna make the situations better because if you if you grew up in this kind of an area with a lot of diversity and different cultures, you know that saying that to Spice is so wrong. Like, but we're gonna hear next week what she's gonna say about that. But that's basically what she was talking about in this episode. All these things, and then she also talked about her affair with DJ Enemy, 
and she didn't know he was married. Um, I've never actually heard her talk about the situation situation with DJ Envy. He did talk about it on the Breakfast Club, um, which he also said that he said something about that he cheated with something that was beneath him or something like that. And Erica Mann was just like, uh, he has the, the way that he treated her when they were having a, her, the affair. He spoiled every commander more than he did his own life, and she pointed that out. I was like, damn, okay, this is where we're gonna go with this. But then, um, but that's the, another thing that I found a little bit fishy about that she, because she said she didn't know that he was married, she, he never wore a ring, she used to be hang out, she used to hang ar around Charlemagne and Angela Yee, where she also referenced as a weirdo, Angela Yee, but he is. But she, she she says actually that she did she didn't know that he was married because she was hanging around with all his friends and stuff like that. But he was also the same person who has a radio show and keep on talking about his wife on the radio show. So I feel like I don't get how you could not know that he was married when he keeps on talking about the wife on the radio show. That's the thing I don't really make understand. And then she tried to say like, oh, where I'm from, Dominican Republic. We have kids, but we're not married. Saying that, oh, he has kids because he, this Amy had kids at the time, and um, when they were together, and Eric Kamen also had a son at the time, and she's saying that, oh well, just because he has kids doesn't mean that he was married. But everyone in the industry, even I, back in the day when I watched the Breakfast Club, I knew that he had a wife, and I'm from Denmark, so you know what I mean. Like you in the middle of New York City, hanging around with his friend and the that whole industry, and you didn't know that he was married. That seems a little bit fishy. Okay, and then she talks about um, Safari and how it was for clear from the beginning, and how it took a long time for, for her to warm up to him, and he had to find his way through all the people that she knew, and it allegedly took him three years to like get close to Erica Mena, like to really like date her. Um, and then she concludes that whole situation with, with Safari talking about the relationship. It's like she. That's touching the things, but she also is like saying that people have seen so much of their relationship. She doesn't need to put more out there about the relationship. Um, but she's saying that she believes that he never loved her, and she's finally come to the terms of being okay with that. Um, but again, so it's like a full expiry is Eric Kamena's karma, and Eric Kamena is Safari's karma. Like those two. Hot heads, Safari as well. Safari is not an angel in this situation. He's definitely a player. Um, but th this this whole episode was just hearing about Erica Mena's life, how she came up, her childhood, her teenage years, the the way she when she's doing um, music videos, when she did the thing with um, the Kardashians, Miami, how she came on loving hip hop. Um, all these different things, but also saying that I'm a victim, I had to go through all of this, I had to do this, I have to do this. And I get it, there's a lot of things that she has experienced that I wouldn't wish I'm a worst enemy, but at the same time, you are an adult, you have three kids now, the situation with spies, and you saying that you come from different cultures and or come from a area where there was a lot of diversity in cultures. Next episode is not gonna lead up to us viewing the next episode being like okay she's gonna come up with an apology that's gonna seem sincere because now she's just it's just, what's it called reflecting what the fuck it just seems like she is trying to have us sympathize sympathize with her before she comes with the apology by stating all these different things and I don't really like it that way around I, Honestly, I feel like she should just come on the Carlos King episode, set the apology, right away set the tone, um, set her piece on the situation and why she was wrong, and then after they could have done the whole thing of her coming out and where she comes from and all that, 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 I've seen that, because that seems a little bit more sincere. This way around, we have seen it so many times, we're not really buying it anymore. Like, I'm not buying it anymore. It just reminds me of the old days where we would used to see TV shows and talk shows where they used to take it that route. And I'm just not really buying it anymore. I just feel like we just need people to just be sincere and just come up with apologies straight away.
that's how I feel about it. So that's my opinion on the situation and um, I'm gonna come back with another video when I've seen the next clip on Tuesday next week. And I hope it's not gonna be one and a half hours because that was a long one and a half hours for not even getting the apology, but yeah. What do you guys think of the situation? Have you seen the interview? What do you think of the whole situation? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Like, subscribe. Bye.